What's up peeps and welcome to episode 3 of the homemade 3D printer enclosure here on Gurney's Project. Last time in episode 2 we rushed through some routing without clamps or straight edges. Next we got around to screwing down some aluminium angles which hold the weight of the door. We then completed some off camera work, spraying the inside silver and screwing on some magnetic catches. We also had to reinforce the top as there was way too much flex in it. Then we managed to get ourselves in a position where we could do a test fit, so upstairs it went. And just finally I ran through the two switches which will be turning on the light and turning on the power to the unit. So that about covers the highlights for episode 2, so let's crack on with episode 3 and get this thing done. So we've got our, our new lid. As you can see, I just put a beam in the middle there. Just painted that all up. So it's all nice and silver now. And actually just sit on top, so we'll just do that. Try and do it one-handed. That way around. There we go, okay. So, as you can see in there, it's sitting there quite nicely on top of the little screws on top of the frame of the printer there. So that is now pretty solid, doesn't really want to go anywhere. So let's just try the front. Okay, hopefully that should just sit in there. That's it. Just about here the magnets click on. So we are very nearly there now. All looks good, plenty of room. So next job, I'm gonna leave it like this, how it's actually gonna work. And then I'm gonna just put all the screws back in on the sides and start filling up all these holes. Get it all ready for the black paint to go on the outside. I've got to put some glue, some bits of, sort of bead on here that I bought just to cover up these little gaps and try and tidy up the corners and things like that. So we'll get to that stage, um, and then we'll have a little, a little look again. The next time we see, it, have some paint on it. So let's just crack on. Okay, so a few hours later, this is what we got. It actually took longer than I thought to um, sweat out this trim, get it looking kind of neat and tidy and even. I went for a sort of continuous strip around the top there, in the corner, and then all around the bottom. Because the whole front comes off, you have to be a bit creative with the corners. And then obviously I've gone in there with some wood filler, filled in all the holes. And then I've just finished off with a bit of sort of decorator's cork or flexible filler. So I'm going to leave that to dry overnight. So it's all gone off nice and solid. And then tomorrow crack on with some sanding and hopefully get some paint on it. That'd be nice. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. The filler is dry now, so we're just going to crack on, start sanding it all back down, get a nice and smooth finish on it um, before we start painting. So it's going to take quite a while, but and it's going to annoy the neighbours a little bit, but it's got to get all this filler back down and smooth. Um, 
and then we'll get our first coat of black paint on. So let's scrap off. Okay, so a few hours later, we have managed to sand all the filler back down. This one's still got a few little touch up bits that need to dry. This is where the old hole has still been exposed, so gotta wait for that to dry. Okay, so a good few hours later, we sanded all the filler down and got all the surfaces prepped for paint. Obviously this is just the, the front panel, the whole thing has been done. But we're gonna crack on with this. Let's get some black paint on there. You wait and you wait and you wait and you wait. Okay, so we're back and this is where we're at. Everything has been painted now. This is just the front door section. As you can see, I've already had a go at putting some tinted glass on there. And it's all, it's actually some cheap and cheerful car tint I had kicking around in the garage. I managed to get it on there and seal it all in. So, just so you guys don't miss out, I figured I'd leave this one till now. But I think you agree it's coming along quite nicely. Um, so once this window's in, the last thing to do is just to sort out the wiring. And the job's done, so. There you go, just give you a better look. Apologies about the untidy kitchen. I figured I'd come in the kitchen because it's way less dusty. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is run a bead of sort of industrial glue around the edge there. Glue in the newly tinted glass and then glue the bead, which is this thing, I pre-cut earlier. Um, and glue that on top, and that just finish it off and holds the uh, the glass a little bit better. So with the glass now successfully tinted and glued into place, we need to move on to the electronics. The first thing we need to do is design and 3D print ourselves a switch box. Obviously the switch box will hold the light switch and the power switch and be screwed to the side of the enclosure. Okay, so time for some pro wiring. Break out the old wiring paraphernalia. So what I need to do is sit down, measure out the wire length I need. This bit goes, kettle lead end. This goes to the printer. So I measured I need 700 mil from the end of that plug back. And that will wire from the printer into the box, which has been 3D printed. Um, so I go through the side of the wall of the enclosure into the wiring box here. And we're going to run the power lead from the socket up and into the bottom of there. So I go onto this switch and then that's the power switch there. And that will be for the light. So the wire will come up into this switch. And when that switch is on, it will turn on the power to this one. And then that means basically the printer will be on and the power to this switch for the light will be on. It all makes sense when it's all in and running. 
Now I've got all the wires cut that I need. I'm just going to start tinning and soldering on the little spade connectors onto the switches. longer than a few minutes later okay so after some painstaking attempts at soldering I must get much more practice at that because it's it took far too long and that's not focusing very well we've got all our spade connectors on so that's for the light and that one is the power and this is the one that actually comes off the main power switch to the printer. So I screwed on my switch box. There she is. Didn't quite go on as neatly as I'd hoped. But that's in there, screwed on with a hole drilled through into the inside. There it is. Man, this is really not focusing. There we go. So now we've just got to plug it in together and turn it on. Okay, so after a little bit of time fiddling around, I had to drill the hole inside bigger, unfortunately, because those two wires wouldn't fit through the 10mm hole. So I had to go up to an 18. Um, anyway, so all the leads are in. The white one is for the light, the black one's for the printer. That's my power switch, uh, power lead, sorry, coming in, plugged in. And here we go. Oh, oh, that is nice. And the light. Then after a little bit more time tidying wires and drilling small holes, it was done. The 3D printer enclosure was built. So that brings us to the end of our first project here on Gurney's Projects, our homemade 3D printer enclosure. Uh, what can I say about this project? Well, I think it went very well. It took a bit longer than I'd hoped. Um, I was hoping to have it done within about a month, but in fact it took nearly three months, um, basically because of some outside commitments. Nothing to do with the build itself, just my time had to be used elsewhere. What would I change about it? Um, I think I would change uh, the flexible filler. I wouldn't use flexible filler next time. Um, it is a pain when you're trying to spray paint it because you'll paint it, it looks good, then it'll crack. You paint it, it looks good, then it'll crack. And in the end, you lose your patience and you just put up with these white hairline fractures. Um, you can't really see them unless you look for them, so it's not too bad. Um, I think I would also be a bit more careful with the routing. Um, I didn't really use a straight edge and I didn't really clamp things down properly because I was just rushing it through. Um, so as a result, the sort of rebates were a bit over the place. Um, but I managed to cover them up quite nicely with the internal beads there. So it wasn't really a problem in the end. Uh, the temperature in there is um, pretty warm. Um, it's worked really well for that. Um, I am going to get myself a little temperature gauge to put in there just to keep an eye on it. Um, but generally, when you take that door off, you can really feel the heat and the smell of the plastic and everything. So it's obviously working well and keeping its own environment in there. Um, printing with the ABS, uh, still a bit of a problem, unfortunately. Um, anybody that prints with ABS will tell you that it's notoriously bad for printing. Um, so 
This is a good base to start from, but I'm still gonna have to tweak some settings and get a lot of prints wrong before I get that bang on. Okay, so this is how it sounds with the door off. And this is how it sounds with the door on. So you can see there's a massive difference there in sound level. Um, so that's a, a big win really. Um, so now I can just sleep next door and it won't be bothering me during the night. So that about wraps things up for project number one, the homemade 3D printer enclosure. If you enjoyed watching these videos as much as I enjoyed making them, then please make sure you hit those like buttons and subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. And remember, if it's broken, fix it. And if you need one, make one. I'll see you next time, peeps. Take it easy.